After almost two decades, Frankie's father has finally been revealed and that man is a queen. God save the queen. So I didn't plan on making this video ever, but story Lord Etchua Oda has kicked my attention right in the nutsack with this disturbingly casual revelation of an already fairly disturbing familial connection. So for anyone who isn't aware, perhaps blissfully unaware, this information comes courtesy of the latest batch of One Piece Vivia cards, which is a sort of living data book where new cards get added every couple of months and often Often characters get replaced with new cards, many of which contain information that Oda didn't see fit to slot into the actual story somewhere. And this time we have a huge cast of characters with their own bombshells to go through like Shanks, Mihawk, Crocodile, Buggy, Vivi, and a surprisingly funny one about Hera, Big Mom's replacement Cloud homie. But the leading story here is Queen and his relationship to Frankie. So firstly, Queen isn't actually Queen's real name. And as much as I so desperately wanted his real name to be something like Freddie Mercury, it's actually Cyan, as in the first five letters of the English word science, and not at all the first and only five letters of the also English word cyan. English is a difficult language, and I promise that I will never insult French again much. On Queen's card, his least favorite food is listed as anything low calorie. His hobby is collecting photos of Komurasaki because he's a creep. And most importantly, we have a timeline of his major life events. 39 years ago, Queen started working with Mads alongside Vegapunk, Caesar Clown, Vince Smoke, Judge, and the soon to be cloned Miss Bucky. Stussy. And this alone is fascinating because it finally gives us a solid timeline for Mads. Up until now, we weren't quite sure when they'd been operating, but according to this, Mads were a group for 13 years, which is a long time to spend with Caesar Clown. The founding date is actually very important though, because this puts the founding of Mads in the same time period as the God Valley incident, which apparently occurred 38 years ago, meaning that Stussy at one point was somehow both part of Mads and the Rocks Pirates 39 years ago, because we know from Kaido's Vivia card that the Rocks Pirates were active for about six years. But essentially, Mads was founded during the peak of Rock's Pirate's reign. And it's very possible that Stussy was kinda sort of betraying them by collecting the DNA of her crewmates to use in the early Mads cloning experiments, which resulted in the creation of Edward Weevil. Now, as for how Miss Buckingham Stussy got Whitebeard's DNA for this Weevil, use your imagination or use Red Tube or something, that's, that's how it happened. But three years after Mads was founded, Queen had a bit of a side gig when he became a parent. 36 years ago, an entity specifically defined as Queen's son was born. And 36 years ago also happens to be the exact same year that Frankie was born. Now, if that's all the information we had, I wouldn't be making this video. It gets a lot crazier. Three years after this son was born, Queen received an offer to join Kaido. However, he either ignored or declined this offer and remained working with Mads for another four years before ultimately deciding to leave the group. Now, here is the tricky thing. Queen did not leave Mads in order to join the Beast Pirates. Joining the Beast Pirates happens way later. So there's actually another unknown reason why Queen left Mads and took his family on the road for three years before eventually, 26 years ago, according to his timeline, deciding to abandon his son and join Kaido, approximately seven years after Kaido's initial offer. And this is where the coincidence gets a bit too wild to ignore because Queen abandoned his son 26 years ago, which is again the exact same year that Frankie was abandoned by his parents, then made his way to Scrap Heap Island and was taken in by Tom. Frankie's parents were also said to be pirates which Queen likely became after leaving Mads. There was that gap period where we don't quite know what Queen was doing, but he definitely did become a pirate after abandoning Frankie to join Kaido. Furthermore, Frankie's exceptional engineering was not taught to him by Tom. 10 year old Frankie already came with this knowledge and even at the age of, again, 10, I said that, Frankie was already extremely adept at creating deadly weapons out of scrap, which is how Tom discovered him and weaponry engineering just so happens to be a specialty of that there Queen. Also, they're both cyborgs and again, it wasn't Tom who taught Frankie how to cyborgify himself after being hit by a train. Frankie just somehow knew how to do this. Tom and Iceberg and all of the everyone else on Water 7 were shipwrights. Their skill set was boats and trains, whereas Frankie's skill set has always been more in the area of scientific engineering and applying that to ships and trains. And it makes a disturbing amount of sense to think that Frankie may have observed his father, Queen, modifying his body over time. And so when it became necessary, Frankie understood the basics of how to build himself body, as well as how to create his series of battle Frankies. You know, a lot of these videos boil down to a strange man on the internet speculating about fictional pirates who can't talk back to me, but today we are going to change that because we are going to interrogate Frankie directly about this queen business through Talky AI, a free app that allows you to speak to over 100,000 characters of various personalities, one of whom is the Frankie in question. So this is gonna get some answers. Yo, Sanji, can I get three colas? Oh, <laughs> your English voice isn't what I expected. 
What's it to you, Sanji? Give me my cola. Is it true that Queen is your father? What? Where did you hear that? Queen is a pervert. <laughs> Think Cyborg Pot calling Cyborg Kettle Black there? But you're also a pervert. I just happen to have a few unusual interests. Remember when Robin grabbed your balls? That was a misunderstanding. She was just, uh, testing my strength. Yeah, that's it. Really? Well, let's just go and ask Robin that. Why did you grab Frankie's balls? Because I can. Because I can. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly back away from Robin whilst my underparts are still intact. But if you guys would like to continue that conversation, then you know where to find her. Just download Talky AI through my link in the description, which features an absurd amount of character categories, including anime, Pokemon for all of you Vaporeon lovers, and mate, look at this. You can even talk to Yusuf Dikic, the uh, the Olympic shooting guy. You can also build your own original characters to talk to, which is pretty cool. It's highly recommended. And it's because of sponsors like Talky AI that we are able to bring you the best fictional pirate content possible as often as possible so definitely check them out but for now it's back to you me both frankie and queen also have an affinity for music and dancing both are also very out there personalities who are frequently described as perverts and each of them just continue to modify their bodies to get bigger and bigger they even go so far as to share the same blood type being xf which is the second rarest blood type in one piece behind so which was fisher tiger's blood type and the reason why none of his crew could give him a transfusion and it's also been noted that that volume 93 could be an homage to the exact reverse numbered volume 39, featuring Luffy and Zoro in the same positions with Queen striking Frankie's pose. This is the point where I, man on the internet, say that there are too many things lining up here. It is absolutely ridiculous, but at the moment, it just fits. With, of course, one very important question to answer, which is how come Frankie didn't recognize his daddy on Wano? He wasn't abandoned as a baby. Frankie was 10 years old and would definitely remember his father. It's difficult to forget it, parent with Queen's aesthetics. And equally worthy of questionment is why Queen didn't recognize Frankie, his child. We're gonna start with the latter question because that is extremely easy to answer, so much so that it really does seem planned by Oda. Because during the raid on Onigashima, we see Queen whip out his bounty posters of the straw hat that he keeps on hand for reasons, and he lingers on Zoro and Sanji, Sanji particularly catching his eye because of the Vinsmoke name. Sanji's true name revealed his identity, as true names often do. In fact, it's what they're, they're designed for. But that's the thing about Frankie. We've been calling him Frankie for so long that many fans forget that his real name is Cutty Flam, and also that he's not even pictured in his own bounty poster. It's currently an image of the Thousand Sunny, but during Wano, Frankie's bounty had a photo of Frankie Shogun. So for argument's sake, let's say that Frankie was Queen's son. In that case, there is absolutely nothing that could indicate that to Queen, because Cutty Flam now uses a new name, and on his bounty poster, there's a new photo that's not him. There's no way Queen could have recognized him. And the same thing goes for Queen, by the way. He wasn't always such a rotund gent. This is the culmination of the ultimate big boy science, and given that Frankie wouldn't have seen Queen for 26 years by now, my guess is that Queen looked a lot more normal at that 26 year mark than he did on Wano. And also again, Queen isn't his real name. Queen took on that title after he joined Kaido, which was after he abandoned his son. Queen's real name is Cyan, which is something that is never mentioned during Wano. So Frankie, yes, he was on Wano, and he could hear ever so many things about this man named Queen, but that's that's all completely meaningless to him. So I did actually go back and go through all of Frankie's parts on Wano, which is actually a surprisingly easy thing to do because he's, he's not in much of the arc. But I had to do it because I could have sworn that Queen and Frankie had been in the same room before. And they are on just one occasion, which is when the Straw Hats gather on the performance floor. It's the part where Frankie gloriously drives his motorcycle into Big Mom's face and then looks like an emperor slaying boss as Nami swoons over him. This is the only opportunity that Frankie had to see Queen and vice versa. After this, Frankie hops into Frankie Frankie Shogun and then runs off in the hallway to deal with Sasuke. What I want to say is that logically the performance floor is like the size of a sports arena. Onigashima is massive and it's completely reasonable that two people can be in this arena sized space and not realize each other's existence. That's how real life would work. But the issue is that we're talking about anime and manga. And if it was important, there is nothing no matter how improbable or illogical that would stop two characters locking eyes. That's the only flaw with this idea in my opinion. And it might just be that way because Oda didn't want to explore Frankie 
Loki's heritage because there was already so much going on during Wano. Like how he didn't see the need to flesh out Zora's family roots and instead revealed all of that information in an SBS. Sort of like how this revelation is coming from a Vivia card. Another question that does pop up is that sure, Frankie and Queen never really had a chance to interact on Wano, but Frankie has interacted with other members of Mads. Vegapunk and Caesar Clown to be precise. And if Frankie was the son of Queen, it would be likely that he'd remember them or that they'd remember him. Frankie was six to seven when Queen left Mads, which is definitely old enough to remember these all hacky weirdos. But at the same time, it's also possible that Queen just never took his son to work. Most scientists don't bring their spawn into their deadly lab experiments. So that's another, you know, question I would have. And so look, I'd like to investigate other options. In which case, the question I would have immediately is if it's not Frankie and Queen both produced and abandoned a son in the exact same two years that Frankie was both born and abandoned, then why mention it at all? To be clear, these Vivia cards usually don't go super into depth with these characters. They're usually more of a collection of information we already know in a centralized location so that you don't have to scan over 1,100 chapters to find everything. But that's why information like this sticks out. It's not miscellaneous flavor text like say characters' favorite foods. And extra details like this aren't just written by random people. This is information from Oda himself. And you would think that if he went out of his way to add this and it would be referring to at least a character of relevance. So how many men apart from Frankie were born 36 years ago? Well, we have Kumidori, who I can kind of see being related to Queen actually, but it's unlikely because CP9 agents are usually taken and raised from birth. Then we also have Smoker, who happens to have been born 36 years ago. Interestingly, it says he was born in the Grand Line. I say that because we know he saw Roger's execution in Logtown as a child. So at some point during his very small days, he moved from the Grand Line to East Blue. Perhaps he was abandoned abandoned in East Blue. Hmm. And Roger's execution did take place two years after Queen abandoned his son. And the last thing I'll say for this connection is that both Queen and Smoker love their cigars. But then there's my favorite fun option, which is that Damaru Black, AKA fake Luffy and now fake Eustace Kid also fits the timeline. And I wouldn't be at all disappointed if he was the child of Queen who ended up achieving a similar level of roundosity. I'm always keen to add to the mythology of Damaru Black, so I would eagerly buy it. Absalom was also born in the same year and certainly shares Queen's obsession with singular female targets. And then finally, we have Vito of the Fire Tank Pirates, who uh, I guess he likes really big guns and so does Queen. I don't think any of them are stronger candidates than Frankie though. You can definitely make a reasonable argument for a couple of them, but with Frankie, I mean, almost everything lines up in terms of the timeline, the skills and personality. The only thing missing from the picture are these questions about character interactions. And I've also briefly considered that it could be Edward Weevil and that maybe he's a lot less white beard than Buckingham Stussy would want us to believe. And Weevil, he's almost perfect, but he was born after the year that Queen's son was born. I mean, born and or created. I don't know, what do you call it when clone? And, uh, whatever happened with Weevil, it happened a year after Queen's son. Maybe that's a discrepancy. I still wouldn't rule out Weevil or maybe another clone that we haven't met. But until further notice, I'm still very much on the Frankie train here, which might be a bit insensitive given his history with trains, but I must still do it. And that was just one of the things that these Vivia cards revealed. Mihawk got a new card which listed his place of origin as unspecified, which is incredibly unusual because even the most mysterious of origins like Buggy and Shanks have been revealed as they were born in West Blue and the Grand Line respectively. So I'm wondering if this means that simply giving away Mihawk's birthplace would reveal too much. Perhaps he wasn't born in any sea, for example. Maybe he was born up at the Red Line and Marijuana and has World Noble heritage. Every World Noble we've logged so far has listed their origin as Marijuana, which is one of the only origin points that differentiates from the seven seas of the One Piece world. Another one would be Punk Hazard, which pops up in the rare case of created beings like the numbers. But I don't know, I'm looking at Mr. Mihawk and I'm thinking that he could have been a world noble or going way out there, perhaps even a Mads clone of an even greater legendary swordsman. Probably not the latter, I'm definitely betting more on world noble, which has been suspected for quite some time now because Mihawk's eyes are quite similar to Emu's eyes, but more people tend to be focused on Mihawk's card stating that he has observation and armament hockey, but there is still nothing confirming that he has Conqueror's hockey yet. As always, I find it incredibly hard to believe that he doesn't. There has never and will never be a greater conqueror in this world than Mihawk. In his chosen field, he has nothing left to conquer. He's so bored that he's waiting for someone to challenge him. And so we wait also. We also have big information from a very unexpected place because Hera, Big Mom's cloud homie, made to replace Zeus as a Vivia card now, which lists her birthday. And that's usually very benign information. However, we all happen to be there on Hera's birthday, narratively midwifing as she was born. Her birthday is on March 17th, meaning that the raid on 
Summer officially took place on March 17th. And given that the Straw Hats reunited on Sabadi Archipelago between February 4th and 6th, this means that the entirety of post time skip One Piece has covered just under six weeks of in-world time. Or actually, I should say that it took less than six weeks to go all the way from Sabadi to the end of Wano. During Egghead, time has passed. I believe we're now in early April. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in other videos, but I believe the reason for this timeline is because Oda wants One Piece to end either on or near Luffy's birthday, which is the 5th of May. I strongly believe that Luffy will either become the Pirate King or achieve his dream beyond that on his birthday. And something I need to add about Hera is that her card says that her favorite food is Zeus, which I just think is really funny. And while we're on some of the more comedy reveals, Oda has stated that if Buggy and Shanks had jobs in the real world, then they would be a factory manager and landscape photographer respectively. Elsewhere, Beppo's bounty has been raised from 500 berries to 1,500 berries, still not the lowest in the series because Chopper is only 1,000 berries. And here's a funky one, Crocodile's hobby is apparently mushroom hunting. Mushroom hunting. That one I only bring up because sometimes characters' hobbies are weirdly relevant, like Blackbeard's archeology span hobby, which seems so out of character when it was revealed. But with what we know now is very much in line with his level of knowledge about the ancient world. And we have some more Straw Hat news to do with Vivi, because as listed on her Vivi card, she is labeled as a former Straw Hat. Very sad because spiritually, I still include her as part of the crew, especially since she has her own motif number, which is also listed on the card. Motif numbers, every Straw Hat has a motif number, which generally denotes the order in which they join the crew. And Vivi's motif number is 5.5, meaning that she is considered to have joined the crew after Sanji and before Chopper, which I've always found interesting. It very easily could have been 6.5 after Alabaster, but it looks like we're counting her as an official crew member or an official former crew member from Whiskey Peak On. And apparently Vivi also sleeps between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. This is 12 hours of sleep. It's so much sleep, it's counterproductive. She definitely sleeps like a princess. In Cypher Poll news, it's been confirmed that Guernica is dead. He's the CP0 agent who interrupted Luffy versus Kaido, and also the man responsible for taking Luffy's Gear 5th bounty image. So apparently, right after he took that photo, Guernica succumbed to his Kaido wounds and died. Meaning that I think Guernica is the only person that Kaido successfully killed during his whole tenure as a main antagonist. At least in the modern day, he did, he did some bad stuff in the past. But also, Guernica's name is spelled differently than I thought. It's actually spelled Guernica with a K, as in Guernica, as in Nika, as in the sun god Nika, which I find very interesting considering that it's Guernica's fault that Luffy awakened his devil fruit and took on the Nika form in the first place. And also take this for what you will, but Guernica's card also lists him as the world's strongest special grade agent. Although at the moment it's a bit vague on whether this is listing Guernica as the most powerful CP0 agent or simply referring to CP0 as a group. I personally believe it's the latter and there's just a lot of weird translations floating around. Either way, he's dead now, so it doesn't hugely matter. And in case you missed it, Tama also appears in this set for the first time with her full name, Kurazumi Tama. So she's a member of Orochi's clan and this was officially revealed in the SBS of volume 105. But look, if you're not a strange man on the internet obsessed with fictional pirates, then I definitely don't expect you to keep up with all of that. So here it is in case you missed it. And also you let me know in the comments what you think about the ever so insane idea of Queen being Frankie's father.